listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordan. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Goof on Radio. Occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Goof on radio. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. You are listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordan. Welcome to Goof On, everybody. I'm your host, Rich Giordano. It is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. Who do I sound like right now? You ready? Uh, welcome, everybody. It's August 3rd, 2022. How the hell are you? Oh, it's going to be fucking great. You know who. You know who. Glad you could be here on hump day. My 9 to 5 is already making it to Thursday. You did it. Congratulations. Now, just focus on tomorrow. And that's it. Friday's always, you know, you know, like a half day. Because half the day, you're daydreaming about getting off for the weekend. At least that's what I would do. Did. Doing. Every day's a Monday to me. Love it. Love it. If you feel like the job you're doing isn't a job, eh, it's not like you're working. That's why we go every day. Because it's not like work. It's just fun. It's, uh... It's a way to, well, for me, it's a stress reliever. But I'm glad you're here to relieve some stress. Be nice, though. Because tonight's show doesn't say the worst UFO movie. No, no. It says most useless UFO movie. Big difference. It's not the worst. It's close. It's pretty close. Have you guys seen this movie? The, uh, what is it? I can't, what, uh, Aliens? I think I even spelled it wrong in the, yeah, Alien, I put allies, Aliens, Abductions and UFOs, Roswell at 75 years. I've got to talk about it. Yeah, I have to. Just for a little bit. Yeah, just for a little bit. 
And we're also going to talk about Gary Nolan. I want to talk about Gary being a dick to Mick West. The f- you know, I knew this Gary Nolan was a shithead. I didn't think he was a stupid shithead. Yeah, I'm not happy right now with Gary P. Nolan. And if I see him, I'll never call him doctor. Hey, what's up, dude? That's what you get after what you did to Mick West, you prick. Unbelievable the, the way people are in this field. And Gary Nolan shouldn't be in it shouldn't be like this. Yeah, you know, we expect we expect a higher level of intellect from a doctor who was whisked away by the CIA, apparently, according to him. Well, the CIA came over and they asked me if you can do this because you're the only one with that type of equipment that can really tell what kind of blood this is. You're the only one, Gary. You're very special, Gary, with two R's. Stupid. Gary. Gary. That's like, Larry. Hey, Larry. I need a pallet in aisle five. Fish. That's who Gary is. If Gary wasn't a doctor, he'd be working at a grocery store stocking dog food. This inconsiderate little mensch of a man. Let's do a little bit of roll call, shall we? I'm in a mood. Rebecca Wiles. Lavender Rose. Welcome to the show. Brookes. Welcome to the show. Den Bub. What's up, Den Bubs? Welcome to the show. Marie Jose Sprow. Wow. Josie, welcome to the show. Andy Cowley. I know I'm making myself laugh again. That's silly. Welcome to the show. Broken opinions. Just got here. What did I miss? Nothing. I got a 15 minute intro. Relax. Enjoy. We're going to talk about you right now. Broken opinions. No, I'm kidding. Welcome to the show. The Josh and Artemis show. Welcome to the show. You kids got a show tonight, huh? Yeah, you better. Mind blown over UAPs. Welcome to the show. Hey, David Wilcox, rounding out the top 10. Hellos. Mike Johnson, mind blown over you. Helen Grizzle on your show. Shock 10, Bug 10, Michael Voting, Rock Sound, Josh Marshall. Congratulations and welcome to the show. Carnundrum. Da da dum dum da da dum. Every time I see your name, Carnundrum, that's the music I hear in my head every time. Dun dun da da dun. Da da dun dun da da dun. Da da dun dun It almost it's it's kinda like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, not really, but close. You know what I mean? Intense. Welcome to the show. Mike Johnson, welcome to the show. David Ah I tried sneaking in there. Brian, welcome to the show. All right, let's get started. Who's at the front door? Mike Johnson's here. I don't know if I said it, but I'll say it again. Welcome to the show. Tony Introvert, welcome to the show. Helen Crystal Energy, welcome to the show. Claude Viles, welcome to the show. Iowaks, Ayahuasca, Patty One, Cindy Boyd. How you doing, Cindy? Good to see you. We'll have some maturity here in a moment. Ben, oh, Cindy, welcome to the show. Ben, the Yorkshire Goofonian. That's beautiful. Hey, hey man, no coral tonight. She's uh, not well, apparently has some sort of uh, cold or flu. She needs to take probably the rest of the week off. Yeah, she says, I'm only going to come back when I'm 100% and I don't blame her. So I hope you're watching and uh, I hope you feel better. It's weird not having coral here. I know, it's like the first time in two years. Two and a half? Well, she's not, she's taken time off before, but knowing that she won't be here is the weird thing. Helmut, how you doing? Is it Kaz? Helmut Kaz? Helmut? Welcome to the show. If I got it wrong, I'm just a dumb Italian. That's how you take that one. Moody Mongo, welcome to the show. Metalhead, welcome to the show. Scott Blight, welcome to the show. Sam Ogophony and Rockstar, welcome to the show. Let's get started. Shell Shock. Giddy up, guy rope, giddy up, Dave Bailey, giddy up. Welcome to the show. All right. <clears throat> Hilton Ramirez, giddy up. Let me get a drink here of coffee. 
I want to start off with a little bit of Gary. Gary! Don't forget, Goofon is supported by you. So if you support the show, all the links are in the show description and on the homepage in the About section. And, uh, you know, Super Chat, Super Sticker Cash App, PayPal. You can join. I'm, I'm loading up videos now. I put one up the other night. Going to put another one up tonight. A third phase uh, UFO report last night came out. was a success. I always think it is. But this one I think was because we have a certain level we want to reach. And we're just kicking off the channel. It hasn't been active since April, February, something. It's been a, it's been a minute. So me and Michael from Dark Hour Paranormal are dedicated to making that channel be a source for UFO videos from the public and, uh, you know, things we see too. It's not all third phase of moon. 95% of it will be. Uh, but I'm trying to incorporate some of my own stuff in there and... Uh, we're just having fun, you know. It keeps our skills sharp for editing and and things of that nature. And I made my first mistake. I don't want to say it, but it was a spelling mistake. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I think I left out a letter or uh, oh, review. I spelled R E V E I W instead of I E W by accident because I probably went really quick. Didn't notice it till I watched the show, and I'm like, oh. And if I can't fix it, because then I then it erases everything we did. So it is what it is. I take my first mistake proudly as a badge of honor. It's like getting shot, getting wounded, and going back to war. That's what I'm doing here. Going back to war. You saw it? Did you? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I know. Hey, that's fine. I can't speak either. So they usually go hand in hand, you know. Um, thanks for that. Thanks for not saying anything. It's okay. I don't care. Oh, why am I so itchy around the nips? I'm, I, I took a nice shower, lotioned up, coconut, coconut, what is it? Cocoa butter? <laughs> no, it, it, it isn't cocoa butter, but shea butter. Yeah. Isn't it shea butter? Coco shea? Coco, Coco Chanel? What's this? Hey, uh-oh. Leisha Bowden. Ah, I got it right. I took the t I took the time. <laughs> Hold on. I need a drink. My mouth is super dry. It's cotton mouth. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, it's cotton mouth. Mm. Oh, that right there. That's a good cup of coffee. That's going to give me heartburn and agita later. So you're welcome. Lisa Bowden with the $3 super sticker to kick off the show. It is, I'll be back. Where the hell are you going? What do you mean? Going somewhere? No, I'm kidding. Hey, thank you very much for the Schwarzenegger reference. I know, right? I'll be back. Did you ever hear how the I'll be back got put into... Uh, I'll tell you in a second, Lisa. Thank you very much. First super chat of the night always gets. Thank you, Lisa Bowden with the three dollar super sticker. I'll be back. That guy's all over AI Terminators T two thousands four hundreds. I don't know what is it T two T T T four hundred. I forget. Thanks, Lisa. So Schwarzenegger and James Cameron, when they were filming uh, The Terminator, Schwarzenegger goes, this line here, I'll be back. Uh, shouldn't it be, I will be back? And James Cameron says, no, no, it's, it's I'll be back. Yeah, but why would the, why would the uh, AI or, you know, what do you say, a Terminator, a robot say, I'll be back? He wouldn't use it that way. And James Cameron says to Schwarzenegger, what does it say in the script? I'll be back. So say the fucking line. Or say the way it's written in the fucking script. James Cameron just told him, read the fucking line, the way it's in the script. Can you imagine if it would have been, I will be back? Ah, good. It gives me goosebumps. 
just like Gary P. Nolan. Can you believe this today? Did anybody see this? His, uh, his lame, I, I don't like it. You know why? You don't want to know why. Because it's, first of all, Gary isn't even funny. Second of all, I'm not even sure he, he should be here anymore. Nah. No. Nah. There's no reason. What has he done anyway? What has he done? What did he bring to ufology? Can anybody tell me now that I'm mad at the guy? Anybody? Here's what he said. It's always proof with this. Uh, so, I guess they were talking about something here. Could it be that we are where we are with UFO legislation, mostly because a few congressional staffers are UFO enthusiasts who are convinced by compelling but unverifiable personal stories, charismatic promoters, and flawed analysis like the SCU Nimitz and Aguadilla reports. I agree with that. And he's responding, Mick West is, to Lou Elizondo saying, once again, excellent work by the great Dean Johnson. This is a direct result of our tireless efforts behind the scenes, most notably Chris Mellon, the congressional staffers, and our courageous elected officials. What a great time to be alive. And that's why Mick said what he said. Then Gary Nolan decides to go, could it be seagulls? That's what you said last time. Stick to that rather than changing your answer every time. By the way, where are your peer-reviewed papers on the subject? I keep checking and can't seem to find any. That said, sorry, you are not charismatic. <laughs> Why? Mick West responded, correctly, I might add, constantly coaching insults as jokes is not a good look for you, Gary. I'm bemused as to why you resort to it. Why not just speak plainly? Great fucking answer. Unbelievable. So Gary P. Nolan is now rubbing it in Mick West's face. This is, this is the eighth grade mentality that this doctor is living in. And often comes from that side of ufology. We know there's two sides. Should I spell it out for you? Always. They always resort to the character assassinations and putting themselves up on a pedestal like they're somebody. Oh, I have peered, rev peered review papers. Where are yours? I didn't seem to find any. I was looking. My, uh, I have to say it because I'm me. If I wasn't me, I can't say what I'm about to say. So don't get mad at me. My 18 years <laughs> in this field, I would kill, crush Gary Nolan in a ufology contest. He would be destroyed. And I don't have a peer-reviewed paper, you prick. I have peer-reviewed fans who know. You guys know. You, I've had people come to me 10 years later saying, dude, I can't believe you're still around. They, you know, they, they see I'm still doing this and they're like, everything you said came true. And everything I said now and said last night will come true any night. It's, it's not that hard to figure out where we're going. It's nowhere. And Lou Elizondo today said yesterday, maybe I don't fucking care. Hey, we're halfway to disclosure. Oh, I had to comment back on that. I had to. Let me pull that up. I had to. Oh, oh, and Gary Nolan. Oh my God, he's such a little bitch. He blocked James Carrion, who used to be a um, MUFON member or something higher up in MUFON. Very, very good researcher. Well-respected. He's the one who proved that Jaime Mosan was using balloons as evidence for UFOs. Do you remember that? It was a documentary. It totally ripped Jaime to shreds. You know what it did to Jaime? Nothing. Eh, no. That's what he said. I am gonna believe. He believes them because why would anybody lie? <laughs> why? Why would anybody lie? Jesus, 
I got to tell you, I don't know. But he blocks James Carrion with never having a conversation with the guy. Gary P. Nolan did. You know why? Because somebody told him to. He can't think for himself. Can't make a decision. You know who's not blocked? Goofon. Probably by now I am. For what I said earlier in a tweet. About to Gary. Uh, yeah, It had to do with that tweet I was just talking about with Mick West. I responded. I don't see it. Let me see if I can pull it up. I know I said something good or not. Maybe it wasn't good. Maybe it wasn't good. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah, they must have deleted it or something happened to it, but it's not here. Um, but anyway, why do you... a med Here, I'm reading the tweet from James Carrion to Gary Nolan. Uh, or why do you, a medical scientist who should be all about transparency, feel the need to proactively block skeptical UAP voices on Twitter? I never exchanged a word with you here. Can one of his groupies please pass this on to him? And they did. They passed it on. I think Gary responded. Oh, is this where I said? Oh, I said because, now this is one of the three tweets today. Because he's afraid you will call him out, I said. You, when you're smarter than someone, they either block you or attack your character. Gary is not one to attack, so he blocked you. It's a good thing, James. You're too smart for his time. Here, Stephen Greenstreet saw that tweet and says, People deeply involved with faith-based tech theologies often block out anyone challenging their faith. Existing within an isolated bubble is a key survival method of the faithful. Wow! Wow, was that a beautiful tweet or what? That's exactly what Gary did. And that's what Lou does, if you haven't noticed. He won't talk to anybody who disagrees with him or he thinks is out to attack him. I still haven't heard back from my private conversation. I know it's not going to happen, so I'm not, you know, amped up about it. Hey, you know, Lou might talk to me. I, yeah, whatever. If he doesn't, he doesn't. My life hasn't changed. Um, it's unbelievable. Uh, this surprised me out of Gary. Blocking people, preemptive blockings, because he doesn't agree with you? Who lives this way? Don't you want to know what other people are thinking? You only want to exist in the world that you feel safe in. Yeah. Gary might not be a real, ma a real man, maybe. Maybe he needs to check between his legs. I don't know. Anybody ever check? Anybody ever sleep with him? Has anybody ever slept with Gary Nolan? Can, can anybody prove he's got balls? Anybody? I don't think he would know, and he's a doctor. Now, I'm pretty sure Gary Nolan's got nothing, uh, nothing under his skirt. Just a breeze. Well, he's proving it. And that doesn't mean anything against women. It means that he's a man acting like he's not. Be a man. So that means women, women don't mean anything. I say, why'd you say it? <laughs> That's the latest on Goofon. Oh, so then you got people like uh, Michelangelo. That's the guy's Twitter name. This interview is important. The Gary Nolan interview with Tucker Carlson yesterday or day before. You should watch it. Proud to have been trained by Gary Nolan, who is dragging the topic of UAP into the mainstream. Yeah, Gary did that. Ass face. Yeah, Gary called up Fox and, and got on. Yeah, Gary did that. Hey, Tucker, it's Gary Nolan. Ah, the guy, you know. Yeah, no, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nope, the other one. I'm Gary P. Nolan. No, Tucker, I want to come on your show. You know, he's not calling anybody. He's not dragging anybody into mainstream media. Gary Nolan is a tool. He is now part of the script. He has been turned. He is part of whatever the Pentagon's doing here with this UAP narrative that we're seeing on TV, mainstream media. He's part of it. 
can't be trusted. And now after seeing the way he acts, it reminds me a lot like Lou. So toodaloo, Gary P. You are Nolan F. Ah, damn, well, how could I? You are Nolan F. No longer. You can't fit it in. The joke's not there. Nice Nolan, ya. <laughs> All right, there we go. Nice Nolan, ya. We'll keep our eyes, though. We're looking all the time. We see everything, don't we? This field's so fun. It is. It, it really is. It's a good time. Yeah, we've got all sorts of people. All sorts. And they're always looking for, you know, anytime somebody's looking for a way to get more views or, you know, doing stunts, shit like that. It's like people don't see it. They can't see into it. Which brings me to tonight's main topic. This, this, <laughs> this might be the most useless UFO documentary ever made. Not the worst. I've seen worse. I've seen worse by that Darcy uh, weirdo guy. You know, the one that he made with the uh, security team? Me, asshole. Yeah, I know. Why are you always bothering me when I'm about to tell you? Because I'm always watching. You're my favorite show, Rick. I know. So why do you make my voice sound that way? I don't like it. It's not right. Because that's how I picture you. Funny sounding. You're just jealous of my two million subscribers. Nah, because I know how you got there. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. When you have two million subscribers and you can't gain a new subscriber for six months, it says a lot about your channel. That's because I already got everybody. Everybody already signed up. I keep telling yourself that. Go ahead and make another shithead movie. God, that movie was so fun. I have the funniest clips I'm gonna play. That you're you're gonna someday. I'll I'll put them out, and uh, it will have a really good time. I can't wait. I can't wait for that day. I don't know when it'll happen. Could be tomorrow. Could be a year from now. Could be in six months when I'm ready. But anyway, um, this movie, you, what is it again? Alien. And I spell, I misspelled it. I know. What is it? Aliens, abductions and UFOs, Roswell at 75 years. They, so basically what this is, it's a movie that teaches you everything that's all of the major UFO events, Roswell, Betty and Barney Hill, the Phoenix Lights, uh, what else that, that they they talked with, the Nimitz incident, uh, 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 Project Blue Book. So it's a history lesson. That's all it is. There's not one thing new in that entire documentary. Nothing. So that tells me they made little, very little effort to research anything, anything groundbreaking. That to me tells me one thing. They're not researchers, they're historians. <laughs> there was no sightings in there, in that documentary at all. We heard uh, two abduction stories. You know the girls who have the up my ass, well, in my butt, uh, whatever show that is? UFOs in my ass, what is it? It's Brie and Jennifer, Jenny, what's her name? I don't know. Jesse? It's Jen, I think. Bree and Jen. Yeah. I don't know, but they, they came out, went with their podcast, and it was something about up the ass or UFO ass. I don't know, but it, it wasn't proper for the language. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when two girls are talking about sexual stuff, well, they're not really talking sexual stuff. 
it's just the title to grab you to come over to watch, uh, you know, a couple of chubbies talking to each other about about UFO experiences they can't prove. And I and I like it how it made me laugh when I heard Jen's story because I know a little bit about her, you know, through the annals of ufology. You know, eyes everywhere usually. You know, been around for so long, I get to see and hear everything. So these people, thanks for hiding those people out, Samo. Good job on that. Um, she's talking, because she, let's just say what it is. I mean, she's a party animal, right? Isn't she? I don't know if she quit drinking or whatever, but rumors, just maybe rumors, I don't know. There's a couple other rumors that, whoa, about her that are I can't talk about. That's that's how bad it is. Uh, but anyway, she's telling her, her abduction story, right? She's driving home and she sees this light in the sky and and she feels like it's looking back at her or something. I know she had a, she lived in a in a four story high rise where she had to walk up all flights of stairs, four flights of stairs to her place. She gets up to her place, she turns around and sees a UFO parked on sitting on top of another building right across the way. Well, she got really scared, she said. She felt like somebody was looking back at her. And she went and I think she hid in a closet. I mean, that, I think so. Uh, did I write that down? I don't think I wrote. Well, anyway, the last thing she said she remembers is seeing that UFO. And when she woke up, she was all disheveled. Her clothes were all off, you know, weirded out, not fitting the right way or something. And I'm like, you came home drunk. I mean, come on. You didn't grab your camera. You didn't think to grab your camera. You didn't think so. You didn't think that'd be a good idea. You have a UFO just sitting right out there. You don't think that I got to grab a camera or something. No, I'm going to hide in a closet. So I think that's a bullshit story. It sounds like many of the dozen and dozens and hundreds and hundreds of stories that people have made up throughout time. Now, I'm not saying she's a liar. I'm just saying it's a little too familiar for me to put in a movie like that. I would never tell that story, but it's true. It's true. It really happened. Well, the weird thing is, unbeknownst to Jen, Bree was also having an abduction experience. Not the same night, but I think it was just weeks apart. And Bree had an experience and it was, you will be abducted. She said, I, I don't know, I, I, I will be abducted. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Oh, the world's in danger or something. I don't know. I can't remember. I was half listening at this point. But I, I think I wrote it down. Let me see. Said they were abducted around the same time. Jen had different clothing on. I was writing it down as fast as I could. But anyway, I'm like, all right. All right. I've now, I mean, that's halfway through the movie. I thought the movie was ending. I still had half to go. I was so upset. They stay, They start off with the Nimitz, then they go to Roswell, then they go back to the Nimitz, and then they talk to D'Souza, and then they got, is it UFO Garage Guy? The UFO Garage Guy. Isn't that who else was in it? It was, it was a very woke, a very woman power, you know, even though there were men in it, you know, the, the two focal points were, you know, the woke left, their view on it. And they were getting things inaccurate about the fiend. They were just off on some of the things they were saying. UFO Jane was in there. By the way, she was the smartest one out of everybody except for D'Souza that was in this movie. But that doesn't say much. <laughs> I mean, D'Souza's on and off. I, I don't even know why he was added to this movie um they yeah i i mean he had to throw i mean they had him throw his two cents in about betty and barney hill hey what do you think about betty and barney hill i could just say what do you think about the nimitz incident oh the nimitz and then he tells what he thinks he knows and how about the phoenix lights can you give us a little bit oh the phoenix lights yeah yeah thousands i mean this was the shittiest research 
because there isn't any. These are all stories in history told a thousand times. It's a useless movie. Um, they talked about Bob Lazar. They used an old uh, news report with Bob Lazar on it. Um, I don't know what this means. Is it true in Roswell that Jesse Marcel heard like this loud thunderous noise and then the next day he found, I thought he found the debris seven days later because she said it was the next day, UFO Jane. And I'm like, I thought it was a week later, like on the seventh. And that, that storm was on the first. Am I wrong on that? Maybe I am wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Hmm. I don't know. I, I put a question mark by it. Not, not sure. Yeah. I, if somebody looks it up, I bet it tells you here, hold on. I, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm going to pull it up. Roswell. Here we go. Roswell. I don't want that. Roswell UFOs. What really happened? Here we go. Let's see. It began da 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 forty seven deep ba da ba do sometime ba ba da ba da wrong wrong wrong. Here's the agreed facts. Sometime between mid June and early July, rancher Mac Brazel found the wreckage. Not oh. It wasn't him. She said he found it. The uh, Jesse Marcel. Mac Brazel found wreckage on his sizable property in Lincoln County, New Mexico, approximately 75 miles north of Roswell. Several flying disc and flying saucer stories had already appeared in the national press that summer, leading Brazel to believe the wreckage, which included rubber strips, tin foil, and thick paper, might be something of that ilk. He brought some of the material to Sheriff George Wilcox of Roswell, who in turn brought it to the attention of Colonel William Blanchard, or Blanchard, the commanding officer of the Roswell dot ba da ba army. The next day, the RAAF released a statement writing that the many rumors regarding the flying disc became a reality yesterday when the intelligence office of the 509th Bomb Group of the 8th Air Force, Roswell Army Airfield, was fortunate enough to gain possession of a disc through the cooperation of one of the local ranchers and the sheriff's office in Chaves County. According to the statement, Major Jesse Martel, Marcel, an intelligence officer, oversaw the RAF's investigation of the crash site and the recovered materials. But I want to know from what day to what day. There's a see, I see how people we, we all get these things wrong, and I just read it, and I was wrong. I hate Roswell. Yeah, I hate it. It should be illegal in UFO lore at this point. It should be illegal to talk about. It's bad. Yeah, Roswell's been twisted and turned so many ways. I don't know what to believe. I can't even believe my own self. I don't know what I'm reading anymore. I've heard so many different stories. And when they did that voice analysis on that Showtime special called UFO, when they went over Roswell and they had the AI of the voice and the, uh, the analysis AI machine, it's the best in the business, they said. Everybody was telling the truth. But when I looked at them, I saw deception. I said, there's no way that's the truth. And oh, he passed with flying colors. See, that's the thing about AI. It may check voice in flux, but it can't tell micro expressions. The most important thing. So that shows a big failure, in my opinion. But this movie is also a failure. Only for the fact that, and, and the editing was awful, awful. You don't, like this person, whoever edited this, I can't remember his name. You don't cut somebody off like this. Yeah, when we went to the UFO, we, and then, and then edit it there. Wait for them to finish their thought. 
and then you, you, you cut it when they're not speaking. That happened twice. And, and there was also three other times in editing like that. You can tell when they were looking up at the UFO, you know they were still talking and they cut them off to go to another topic. I'm like, how awful is this movie right now? It's not the worst. It's not the worst. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's useless. And you don't do profile shots. If you looked at the thumbnail today, you don't want side views of people. Nobody wants to be looked at from the side. Unless you're George Clooney or Heather Lockyer. <laughs> Heather Lockyer, get it? Uh, Jeremy Corbell. Never mind. Forget about it. It's over. Unbelievable, this movie. I can't even... Hold on. I want to pull it up for a second. I want to pull up the trailer. <laughs> the trailer for Trailer Trash of documentaries. Uh, what is the name of it again? Aliens? UFOs? No, abductions. Right? Abductions and UFOs. Roswell. Let's see if it pulls up the uh, trailer. Here it is. Here's the trailer. I can play the trailer. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Voorhees was in it. Yep. Nothing bad to say about him. I don't blame him. He doesn't know. He's just a nice guy. He has no idea. He's still new. So this is the future of ufology right here. Out to actually go to Roswell. We have what is alleged to be a UFO crash with several bodies inside. Yeah, tell me something I don't know. They basically covered it up and it was super. Really? They covered it up? I never heard of this before. Covered it up. There is and what is with the side shots? This is what I'm talking about. No, nope. nobody wants to be looked at from this angle ever. Ever. It is bad. Oh my God. At least they framed it right, but still. There is a headline that reads, Flying Saucer crashes into Roswell Ranch. Why did the government acknowledge it and then immediately change their mind? Gee, I don't know. A great question. Can you tell us? No. She doesn't tell us anything. She doesn't even give her opinion on it. Just tells us things we already know. Sorry, so I won't yell anymore. We're in a different place That's now where the government says... Yeah. Oh, and we got Bandana Boy. You look so pretty. Place now where the government says, yes, we've been looking at UFOs. Yes, they're real. There's objects in the skies that we don't know what they are. They're 40 seconds into this documentary and they don't even show D'Souza? How do you not put D'Souza in the front of this? It's the very first time that the government... Gary Voorhees Jr. is not selling documentaries. Who got together with these people? Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I said I wouldn't yell that at This Bad. is an Thank actual you, Sam thing. Up. It's the biggest story in human history. No, you got to hide him from the channel. Thing. You got to hide him. And there's the doco. That's it. That's the POS. <sighs> There's more. There were mistakes about the Phoenix Lights that they made. Um, talking about um, the governor and shit and where they saw the sightings. They, they didn't know the story fully about how uh, Russell, uh, what's his name? Kurt Russell and his son saw the lights. They, they got that part a little bit wrong. Yeah, there were some big mistakes. They talked about Project Blue Book. Yeah, it was pretty boring. I don't know what else to tell you guys because I don't know. I just... I just, I don't know. I, I stopped watching it with 20 minutes to go. I, I couldn't watch it any longer. I don't need a history lesson. 
Um, anyway, like I said, not the worst. There's worse. There's a Corbell trio of movies that are worse than that. No, actually, Corbell did better than this. Yeah, I have to admit. If Corbell does another Skinwalker Ranch movie, it'll still make money. People will pay to go see that shit. And, and he is awful, just awful. The Josh and Artemis show played this video, and it's of a guy reviewing Jeremy Corbell's Bob Lazar movie. And it is the funniest thing. I can't remember the name of it, but I need that link. If Josh and Artemis are listening, can you Twitter me that link to that video if you have it? Because I want to play that f parts of that. It just makes me happy. The way this guy rips Jeremy Corbell. Not, not in a bad way. In a very, very artistic, funny way. It's brilliant. It's really one of the best videos I've seen. Like, period. For a good time, you know? As Lou Elizondo mentioned, this tweet from Skinny Bob on Twitter, obviously... We are halfway to Disclosure. When Disclosure is complete, humanity will know. Thus, the intelligence behind the UAP will no longer be able to hide. Wow. So I wrote, wait a minute, I wrote, ha 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 I wrote, a, I did, I wrote a very long ha 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 and also some other things. Hold on. I said, uh, halfway to disclosure and we don't have any evidence yet? Wake up the left, the woke, and the gullible. Halfway to nowhere is more like it. Ha 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 From when? When was the starting point? When were we at 5%? I want to know how long it took to go from 5 to 50. Was it the last three years? Because if that's halfway to disclosure, we're not having it. There's no evidence. You can't say we're halfway to disclosure without giving evidence. I don't get this. Let's say you got a couple amendments through. Oh, we can now talk to our colonel about UFOs without getting beat up on. Nobody's going to laugh at me. I'm no Kevin Day. I'm not going to break down. You call me Kevin Day. I'm no crybaby. Poor Kevin Day. He's so sensitive, right? Poor guy. No, I mean that. I really do. Poor guy. Oh, Ben, the Yorkshire Goofonian, a two pound, two quid super chat. It's the, is this the first one? Is this the first one? Did we already have one? I don't remember a super chat yet. I think we had one, right? Yeah, $3 earlier, right. Ben, thank you very much. Let me see if I could scoop that, that up. Okay, here it is. Oh, oh, I don't like this. It took me out of my chat room, but it worked. You got it. All right, here we go. Ben, stellar, beautiful, grazie, mucho gusto, generoso, continuing supporter of Goofon. That's right. We survive on super chats for now. Well, not really, but not anymore. Thank you very much, uh, Ben. I'm going to uh, put this clip up now. And here it goes. This video is a review of the documentary Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers. The intention of this video is to show evidence of... I'm not going to go through this whole thing, even though I'd love to. Bullshit. There was an FBI raid during the film. He did get raided by the FBI. That's in my film. I found the guy that did the security... I am loving this already. I'm just in love with this video. 
security clearance for him. I found the guy that did the security clearance for him to be able a hand reader. And Jeremy, you found this. I, I found it. So I was able to reveal it in my film. You're going to hear and see things that are new evidence, new things that have happened over 30 years. It will change the landscape. So, Jeremy, how do you know? I love when he talks about this shit. Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers is a uh, <coughs> documentary by Jeremy Corbell. It's supposedly the definitive telling of Bob Lazar's fascinating story. Sadly for Bob, Jeremy makes terrible films. He also has a strange relationship with the truth. Let's take a look. And unlike Jeremy Corbell, I will actually provide proof. <laughs> Imagine that as to why Jeremy's claims of new evidence are bullshit. For me, it was 1989 and Bob Lazar telling his story. That's what weaponized my curiosity about. Oh, my God. OK, I'm going to pause it right there before I throw up. I have to get a bag because this is the part where I threw up every time. So hold on. David will. <clears throat> I know he's going to say weaponize my curiosity several more several more times <clears throat> david wilcox thank you for the ten dollar uh super canadian chat disclosure is like the doomsday clock four minutes to disclosure yeah right two minutes to midnight to kill the unborn in the woo midnight Midnight, it's all right. Da -choo, choo -choo -choo. Thanks a lot. And the mucho gusto generoso, David Wilcox. All right. Hold on. I don't have a bag. I've got one bag, but I can't throw up in it. I'll use the hat. All right. <clears throat> Got a hat to throw up in. I have two of these, so it's okay. Who's this guy? Tony McClear. Mr. $10, 10 pound, 10 quid. Super dono. Thanks, man. $10. That, I'm telling you, man. Every little bit helps. Thank you so much. You guys are freaking amazing. Believe me. Believe me. You want me here every night. As soon as I leave this field, it's going to do what it did last time. It's going to get awful. Nobody's going to know the truth. Who's going to tell you things? Nobody is. Thank you, Tony McClear. Who's telling you what I'm telling you? Who? Cambian? He's going to talk about what? Wilcox again? Huh? You're going to pick on Linda Moulton Howdy Duty, stealing my words. What are you going to do? Another video on that? Oh, God. How many videos are you going to do about the same people with no new information? It's amazing you guys buy into that shit. It really, it's amazing to me. To each their own. And also, Rebecca! <laughs> with a $10 PayPal. Says, a good on Camel Day. Hump day. Nice. Nice. It's hump day. I got it. I got it. I got it. That was funny. And Babs Williamson with what it's raining all of a sudden. Babs Williamson with a $10 cash app. Why am I yelling? I, I'm I you guys just you super cool. Thanks for that. Thank you. Everybody who support who just supported is a continuing supporter of Goofon. Thank you for that, you guys. You know, my parents are like, why aren't you selling any mugs or T-shirts or anything like that? We were looking, we were going to do that, and you never did it. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think I need to. Do I need to? Do you guys want a Goofon mug and hat? You know what I mean? I don't know why you would want that. I don't know. I just feel weird doing, you know, what we do. And even though you're donating and all that stuff and supporting the show myself to do this every day, I also don't want to nickel and dime my fans 
into something they really didn't want in the first place. You're never going to wear those shirts more than once. Use those cups ever, probably. Maybe you will. But, you know, I just feel... You guys do enough as it is. Why do I need to nickel and dime you? That's just me. That's why I never did that. I never sold anything all those years. Never did. I just... It was different back then, too. I was supporting myself, you know, and all that. But times have changed. The show has changed. I have changed. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with accepting donations, but I'm not sure if I should be selling anything. I just feel it's, I don't know. Why? I. It's not wrong. I just feel weird right now. People are still trying to convince me to do it. And I say no, at least twice a month. I'm always, uh, you know, hey, man, you want me to design some shirts for you? I'm like, hmm, not really. Not really. Alfie Joe Bob, that's $10. Yeah, it's a $10 super sticker. I can't see it. Hold on. That's what she said. Shut up. Every time. That's what she said, too. Shut up. For condoms? Oh, my God. I wish. You see, now, Alfie, it's yellow on the YouTube channel, but on mine, on uh, you see it's green. Isn't that weird? It is a, uh, it's a, a heart being held by a fox saying, you know, I am giving you love. I know. Hey, sometimes, you know, we pause the show for super chats and likes and and say that we love each other and, and it's okay to do that. We're here two hours every night. We do what? What do we do? 14 hours a week on Goof On. That's 56 hours a month. And then we do the other show, which I couldn't do today. So we do the other show. It's not ufology, but, you know, then we go on Alien Attic show for two hours. That's eight, you know, so about 64 hours. Now we're doing third phase UFO report, and those take a couple of hours to make, and I'm doing three or four a week. So we're working pretty hard. We're still going to the Artemis launch. I have to call Jason right after this show. If somebody can remind me, please do. I've got to call him, but we're still going. Third phase of moon landed today in Washington. They're going to meet up with Greer and some politicians and congressmen and open some doors. They're getting in the thick of things. See, the other side of the narrative. You may not feel comfortable, but I'm telling you to, to readjust your seat and get comfortable with third phase of moon because they're in it. And they are doing what we are trying to do. They just have a much bigger audience. And if they have an in with Burchett and, and Greer may open some doors while they're out there. Things are going to be a lot different. Yeah. I wanted to go to Washington and meet up with them, but I can't. I just can't. It, it pains me. All right. Um, thank you, Alfie, Joe, Bob. Appreciate the love. Mucho gusto, generoso. Did I, is there another one? No. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing when Coral's not here. Yeah. You don't realize what you have until it's gone. But I, I knew. But, you know, when it gets busy, it's, it's different. Um, it's, it's hard. It's not easy. I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, hold on. I just got another message. It's all right. Oh, wait a second. Tony McClear with the 11 1135 on the cash app. Really? That just came in? Hold on. That was weird. It didn't, didn't beep. It did. Thank you very much. Holy shit, guys. Thank you. This is like the old days. Amazing. Thank you very much. And can I, um, I'm going to say something. A lot of you who were patrons came over to Goofon membership, and I'm going to tell you to do that. If you're on Patreon, 
for Goofon. If you still want to be a member, go over to Goofon here because it, there's issues with videos being loaded up that I want to, I, I have to do twice the work, which it's fine, but just come over to Goofon and join here. It'll be much better and you won't miss anything. And for me, it's going to be super easy. I don't want to have to do everything twice for videos. Not like it's hard. It's just convenient. All right. So when we get down to zero over on Patreon, uh, well, I am going to end it. This is the last month. So there won't be a September for patrons. October? October. There won't be any October. So there's one more month for the patrons. And that's uh, done and over with. There's no reason for it. And most of you already came over. So thank you for that. I know, I know, I spend eight to ten minutes, you know, super chatting it up, talking to my folks. Why am I yelling? I am trying to not yell. All right, let's see if I can not yell the rest of the show. Let's see how long I can go, because I don't want to yell anymore. I don't want to be that guy. I want to talk calmly. All right, so we're playing this. Why? Because I hate Corbell? Oh, because it's funny. Oh, that's right. So Corbell was about to say, weaponize his curiosity. I got my throw up hat. Here we go. My, my imagination has been weaponized. I, 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 again, I want your imagination to be weaponized. This weaponize your curiosity. That's my goal, <laughs> to weaponize your curiosity. My curiosity was weaponized by <laughs> weaponization of my curiosity. And I really hope to weaponize people's <laughs> curiosity. Uh -huh. Weaponized my curiosity. My curiosity was weaponized. <laughs> I, I want to weaponize your curiosity. <laughs> I have a weaponized curiosity. <laughs> like weaponized my, my curiosity. <laughs> Weaponize that. First, a bit about Bob Lazar. Bob is a physicist who in 1989 <laughs> came out with a story about working near Area 51, re-engineering supposed alien spacecraft the military had discovered years earlier. <laughs> crazy, right? He also tried to set up a brothel with his girlfriend. Still crazy. Oh. His first wife turned oh up dead God. at a house that he would later live with his second oh wife. Crazy. God, he was also that. married to both women at the same time. Yes, Bob Lazar's story is oh. fucking crazy. True or false, this is is an interesting guy with an uh. interesting story. Now I have no reason to doubt that he worked at uh. Area 51 or S4, which is the area he says oh, this all happened. Man. I also believe he's a very <laughs> smart dude. S4, I think of Fat Tony. <laughs> oh, oh, hoaxer Fat Tony. Dude, that saw something weird. That's don't be talking about me, Rich. You don't talk about me. Don't talk. I didn't use that video. I didn't fake it. It was a real video. Sadly, Bob Lazar, Area 51, and flying saucers will not only add nothing. Look at his feet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn this off. Look at his feet. Oh, my God. That's a size 10. 10 and a half, it looks like, with a callus on the big toe. Oh, God. Oh, well, you know, he created that new jujitsu y. Jiu-jitsu -y? What is it? Quasi jujitsu -y? Nobody knows what the hell. He has his own dojo. Right? Doesn't he have his own dojo? Yeah, it's for mofos. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. That's silly. That's immature. I'm going to bump. I'm going to take a, a hit off of my one hitter. I, I, need a re I need to go this last hour. I'm not yelling. I'm not yelling. Still not yelling new to the story it will actually damage it by either leaving out important information or straight out lying yes the main problem here is jeremy corbell now don't worry if you don't know jeremy you're going to see a lot of him in this stocko and when i say a lot we will see him more than we see bob lazar this phone reenactment is 20 minutes alone of the film that's no exaggeration it really is <laughs> Oh man, check out those poses. Even though some <laughs> documentary filmmakers include themselves in their films, I there is usually a reason needing to confront individuals or simply they are part of the story. But the really great documentaries let the story come straight from the subject and it can pay off to listen. Kill them all. 
Jeremy. Jeremy wants to be the star. So much so that the first six minutes of this film is taken up by Jeremy play acting in his bathroom. Yes, that's 20 minutes in the lounge room and a good six in the bathroom. Not only is the little play a confusing way to start your doco, where is your subject, Jeremy? It's not supposed to be you. It's linked to a lie. The famous raid. He did get raided by the FBI. An FBI raid that wasn't what it all appears. Now, I know filming in your bathroom is a lot easier than actually going out and investigating. Has Jeremy Corbell ever commented on this movie? Does anybody know if he's ever done anything in rebutting towards this? I don't think he has. He can't. Uh, this guy exploits him to perfection. I wish I had the talent this guy did when he made, he's very good at this. I, I don't know. Sometimes you hit a home run, you know? This is a home run. It's so funny to me. Not, even if I wasn't a, you know, a Corbell denier, uh, I, I would enjoy this because he's actually I don't know. You know, you know. In the story. But once you've set up speak. your little light with the pink gel and you've pulled off those poses, make sure you've changed head. the date on your fake messages. I know there's the incoming message time different to the phones. It's a completely different date. He changed the phone time to suit his story, but not the messages. I mean, it's only the start of your film, Jeremy, and supposedly an important... Oh my God, that is so funny. This is long. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but that's funny. Wait, I think what Jeremy did, he was just showing, right? Or was he acting like these were coming in at that time? I always wondered about this one. Like the, They came out to him on 825. And here it says July 19th, a year later, probably, right? So I think what he was doing was bringing up the text messages and reenacting how that went down. But yeah, he made a big mistake right here. He didn't explain that at all in the movie, but yeah, it was a, it was a big, I see it. It's a big mistake. Well, that's Corbell, you know. He is, uh, he's just bad. But not the messages. I mean, it's only the start of your film, Jeremy, and supposedly an important detail, but fuck it. The other agenda was to uplift the visual medium of filmmaking in this genre, which I did. That's a big statement. And you know what? And you know what? You know what? It's, it's all, it's all aimed towards the dummy down America. You and I, we know better. That's why he doesn't give a shit about us. He's smart. He is. He's smart not to respond, not to get into any arguments, but we know Jeremy Corbell a little bit. We've had experiences with his entitlement. How dare you call me while I'm eating dinner? As if I was supposed to know his schedule. Remember? I'm eating dinner. I didn't know your schedule. Uh, you know, most people eat early. Some people eat late. Some people don't eat. Yeah. And then when third phase of moon called him, they're like, he goes, how did you get this number? And meanwhile, they worked together in the past. I have his number. I think we should call him. Not right now. It'll be a surprise though. We are going to call him. Remember that? That was, if I could find that in my computer, it's somewhere. God, that would be the greatest clip of all time when that, when I called him on the show. Half of you weren't even here. That was amazing. And he's like, uh, I said, Jeremy, you're on a live call on a, on a show right now. It's a live stream. I'm live right now? Yes. Well, I didn't give you permission. I, I know. I know. That's why I'm asking you. I'm telling you. Before you say anything, we're, we're on the air. Why are you calling me? I'm eating. No, I, I didn't know your schedule. Well, what do you want? Who are you? 
I said, well, this is Rich Giordano from Goofon. And he goes, Goofon, Goofon. I know that name, but let me tell you, I won't forget it. I go, good, okay, all right. And he's like, uh, I don't want to be on on air right now, so I don't want to be on this call. Meanwhile, he kept me on for almost seven minutes, telling me how he didn't want to be on the show. Remember that? And then we got into it, and he goes, I tell you what, Rich, I tell you what. I promise you, if you delete this, I will come on your show. And he made a promise. I deleted it. Just that section where we talked reposted the show, emailed him, told him I did it. When would you like to come on? No reply. Not even once. I emailed him twice. I emailed him the exact same email with a different subject line saying, you promised Goof on an interview, Jeremy. That's the kind of guy he is. That's why I don't like him. I don't like people who break promises. I don't like people who lie. And I don't like people who can't be nice. He wasn't even nice to me or third phase of moon. Not even in a way like just a casual conversation. Hey, man, sorry. I was so nice to him. I said, sorry, man. You know, I didn't didn't know you were eating. What I, da, 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 da. And uh, we hung up and I'm like, what an asshole. You know, and he was the same way with third phase of moon. How dare you call me, he said. And they go, well, Jeremy, that's why people have phones. So people can call them. Well, you have to set an appointment. Email me when you're going to call me. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But he wanted to know, hey, you let me know when you're calling. I understand that. I'm the same way. Text me before you call me so I expect your call. But he didn't say it that way. But I like to know when somebody wants to talk to me. If somebody calls and I don't know the number, I'm not answering it. He answered my call. Anyway, that, that's just a little reminder of the relationship with Jeremy Corbell and Goofon. There isn't one. And the only one there is, is that phone call. And a broken promise on air. I can't believe I got to find that. I've got to find it. Maybe recreating a Soundgarden clip from 1991 is lifting the game. Hold the fuck on. Hold the fuck on. But what I didn't do is I didn't make an ancient aliens bullshit thing where I try to nope. show you some stupid fucking oh. image and be like, oh, that's fucking it. The films I'm putting out, although they're not force feeding you some bullshit spooky movie kind of grainy footage stuff, what I am providing you is the real story. You liar. It is full of this shit. Yes, of all the people Jeremy's convinced of Mickey Rourke to what he calls narrate the film. Beliefs are Mickey and it seems like the reading of almonds by viewing the entrails. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? And by narration, he means saying random shit that is not only impossible to understand, but has zero to do with Bob's story. Now, Jeremy is no wordsmith on his own. Imagine a place between shadow and substance. What? Imagine a place between shadow and substance. What does that even mean? Between shadow and substance. I really don't know what that means. Between shadow and substance is space. Whoa, he just blew my mind. You know what he did? He weaponized. What does that mean? <laughs> Why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. But he is super pumped to have Mickey Rock on board. Oh. Give him some space, man. Oh. <laughs> Same billing. Now remember, Mickey was the good-looking, talented actor who decided oh. to go into boxing. And well, let's just say, not the best outcome. <laughs> so of course the guy that's been hit in the head way too many times should narrate. Maybe they'd like our condors and cupcakes. Kimono or the top hat, who the fuck knows? <laughs> fuck, he sounds like he's had a lobotomy. Wait, 
What's that scar? <laughs> My mistake. Everything's normal. Before we get into Jeremy's problem with the truth, let's look at what Jeremy believes. My documentaries are investigative journalism. It's it's a investigative filmmaking. I want. He is not an investigative journalist. You have to go to investigative journalism college or something. That's a degree. And an investigative journalist is someone who is investigating something to where they're bringing new evidence to light, either on a brand new subject or a subject already known. So if you're breaking new evidence on the regular, you are an investigative journalist. He hasn't done that. He's not an investigative journalist, not, not by the, uh, the, def the definition of it. But a lot of people use that, that term haphazardly in this community, you know? I'm an investigative journalist. Oh, wow. You do tell, do tell. Yeah. What story did you break? Huh? I said, what story did you break? Huh? What, me? Ha <laughs> Yeah, we did. No, no, I'm asking. What story did you break? Is it is time for a break? I'll be right back. I want to know the truth as much as you do. I identify myself as an investigative filmmaker. Ugh. Jeremy's been selling this for years. <laughs> the idea that he truly investigates and wants to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. He wants you to think his film will actually teach you something new. You know, I want to know too if this is true. I think that it's either true or it's not true. I want their critic- Wow, he's aged a lot in the last cut three years. No. Hasn't he? You. <laughs> you know, I, he looks much I younger know in too, this if next this one. Is true, there too. I think that it's either true or it's not. Doesn't he look young, like 10 years younger there? And that's only a couple of years. Yeah, three, three and a half, maybe four. True. I want their critical, rational wow. minds. So really what I want you to take away from it is use your logic, your reason, your. Well, oh shit. Oh my God, we are getting inundated now. The storms are coming again. I thought I thought I just saw a huge flash and then the thunder has been rolling now for 30 seconds. Um, You're I'll optimistic. Just, I'll just finish this off here. That's um, what she said. Shut up! You're in your windows. All right, this is a good part. And then maybe we'll end it here. Thing all over the internet. I don't want to get Never in trouble. Found anything. They said it was bullshit. It was, sci it was science fiction. And Jeremy, you found this. I, I found it. So I was able to reveal it in my film. This is great. I never thought I'd see one of these again. <laughs> it is touching after 30 years when no one will believe Bob. Jeremy hands him photos of this very hand scanner printed off the internet onto photo paper so Jeremy can pretend that they are original photos. Sweet, sweet moment. I can't believe you found the picture of this. But I tried to explain this to people so many times and they either didn't believe me or said- So if Bob Lazar is lying right here, acting like that's the first time Jeremy Corbell handed him those photos, he's a pretty good actor. Cause that's what this, uh, this guy who made, you know, Robot Head here, that's what he's implying, that Bob Lazar was prepped and then he's acting like he just got these for the first time. I actually want to take a look at that again. And let's see if we can tell if he's lying. Photos of this very hand scanner printed off the internet onto photo paper so Jeremy can pretend that they are original photos. Sweet, sweet moment. I can't believe you found a picture of this. But I tried to explain this to people so many times and they either didn't believe me or say, yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah, I'd hate to show. Yeah, he, he seemed like he was genuine right there. Do you know, and thanks to Dorothy for sending this just now, how do we, how to do investigative journalism? Stick to facts. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Yeah, I can do that. So yeah, stick to the facts, right, got it. Whoa, hold on, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm saying sorry when you don't even know what I'm sorry about. Here we go. This is what I like about doing a live show and using a thing like StreamYard 
because we can share this information at the ready, man. I mean, it comes in and we disseminate it right away. Now I'm proving to you exactly what an investigative journalist should be. You hear the thunder? Oh my God, it's nonstop all of a sudden. Earlier today, there was a tornado warning again. They said this is the hottest year so far in Florida in 40 years. It was 94 today again, mid 90s all week. Storms are outrageously violent. All right, so stick to facts. You will be much safer if you stick to facts which you can prove are true. All right, makes sense too. Avoid personal comment. Do not put in your personal opinions. Nice. Keep your language simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss, right? Avoid vague words. <clears throat> Subjustice reporting. Judas? Subjudas? Mistakes. I don't know what, why, what, uh, I don't understand. Payments for stories. Okay, and concealing crimes. Huh, I don't know what I'm reading here. I'm being honest. Mistakes? Are you looking up? Are you looking for mistakes? Seven, you have to pay for your stories, pay to keep them quiet. Is that what that means? And eight, concealing crimes. Yeah, you can't, if you have a whistleblower, and they tell you about things and somebody's concealing crimes, that's something you would wanna, oh, I see, I see. Okay, concealing crimes. So if somebody's concealing crimes and you break that story open, got it. If someone is receiving payments for stories in the media and whatnot, who made big mistakes? You're gonna break those stories on those who made mistakes? Ah, uh, sub Judas reporting. Yeah, that's what's going on now. And I do say both sides are a little skeptical. I don't know. They're nah, one side more than the other. But Jesus, man, can't anybody tell the truth? Very good. Thanks, Dorothy, for this. Yeah, that's amazing. I think I'm reading this right. I think I'm reading that right. Oh, I think we got, so what did Jeremy do as far as that list? Did he stick to the facts? Mm. You will be much safer if you stick to the facts. Yeah, he didn't stick to facts. No, he altered things. Avoid personal comment, which, you know, he shouldn't have even been in the movie. Let's just say that. If, if, if you're a uh, director in a documentary, you can put yourself in there, maybe at the end or at the apex of the movie where the director comes in for 30 seconds and says, this is where things took a turn for the worse. And then, then, then it gets dramatic, right? And then the exciting, the apex of the story. And then you don't see that guy ever again. That's it. That's the Cousins Brothers do that. They taught me that. Don't show you people don't want to see that they they know it's about something it's not about you that's why you don't you only see brent and blake and you know very few beep seconds holy shit my windows are rattling that was a deep rumble like there was a you know somebody with a, a boom box outside that was a good one. All right, uh, back to the movie. Cause I, I don't care, it's fun. This is fun. I'm enjoying this part of the show. I am. I never, I don't think I've ever showed this on Goofon. I don't think I, I think I, I did, but I, I think it was two and a half years ago when it first came out. I think this thing only had 40,000 views. Now it's got 571, yep. I, yep. Oh, thunder. Listen. Wait. Wait. 
it's crackling, but it never boom. Oh, there it goes. All right. Shine a light on Jeremy's investigative skills, but between Bob and the Inve Come on, dude. To shine a light on Jeremy. Oh, there's the thunder. Seriously, dude. Not there isn't a director in the world that has ever shown their disgusting feet on a on a movie in a movie actors don't even show their feet like real actors hollywood that you never see their feet but jeremy corbell wants you to see his feet he wants you to notice they're a size 10 and a half but for some reason he wears 12s doesn't make sense he wears moccasins right he doesn't wear boots or he wears moccasins i heard nice house Nice house. Jeremy's investigative skills, but between Bob and the investigative filmmaker, someone might have noticed that this very scanner was used in one of the biggest sci-fi films of all time. <laughs> Close encounters of the third kind. And it's not in the background. A nice big shot of them using the scanner. Four rapid pulses after a five second interval, 40 pulses. Another five second break and 30 pulses. What? 60 seconds of silence and then an entirely new set of numbers. 40 breaks. It's exactly, exactly how it was. This film. How could that be? How could that be? Hmm. I spilled a little shim sham on me. A little bit of that drink I made. Um, how do they not? I don't know, man. I know I keep stopping it. I just don't see how you don't know about this. You know what I mean? How does how does he not know? You can buy these things. Exactly how. This is it. I've never seen this before. Bob, when did you get here? I've been listening the whole time, Richard. I'm not real appreciative of you calling me a liar. Bob Lazar, everybody. Hey, man, glad you're here. I'm not glad I'm here tonight, you prick. Oh, you don't have to call me names, Bob. Oh, it's Bob today, is it? Oh, yesterday I was slob. Shut off. This film came Shut out off. in 1977, 12 years before Fuck Bob's you. claims, when he was 18. Asshole. It was up for eight Academy Awards asshole. 42 friggin' years ago. To close encounters of the third kind. Now, true, I don't know if Bob has ever seen Close Encounters. Sad for him if he hasn't. Could have really shut up those people that didn't believe him all along. Bob does seem like the type of guy that would rather be out driving rocket cars, shooting guns, building hydrogen cars, opening brothels and generally blowing shit up than sitting at home watching movies. So maybe he missed the massive film that came out when he was in his teens about alien contact with the exact same hand scanner. Everybody saw that movie in ufology. Everybody. Everybody. Bob Lazar was what, 15, 14 when that movie came out? Maybe 17? Came out in 77. I was nine. And I know Bob is only what, eight years older than me? 62? Seven years? He, he saw that movie been non-stop the whole time. Maybe he never caught it on video either. I tell you, if I had been trying to describe something for 30 years and it popped up on my TV, I'd fucking notice. But what about our little grey furball? He's been following this hand scanner <laughs> story. I love that. <laughs> that is amazing, that picture. Since he was 13. Has he seen Close Encounters? If only there was an interview where he was talking about Close Encounters as being one of his favourite films. If only they'd asked him how many times he'd seen it. How many times have you seen the film Close Encounters? I mean, is this, this is a test probably too many? What was that, Jeremy? Probably. Do you know he he's lying? Yeah, that's a lie right there when he said it. That's why he paused it there. Big time lie. He has probably only seen Close Encounter one time. That's what it seems like to me. 
That's why he probably didn't know about it. He didn't know about the hand scanner because he's never seen it more than once. Or he may never have seen it. It's possible. That's what happens when you're Corbell. You're very, you're maximum at everything you do. He's an introvert. He maximized his curiosity by being alone all the time. <clears throat> Wait, too many? Too many times? And you never notice the hand scanner. Right. Investigative filmmaker? Obviously, as one was used in a major movie, these scanners were not that rare. Yes, they were used as part of the stealth program, but they were also advertised in the early 70s for other commercial uses. Jeremy can't even keep his own story straight. In this film, he states he found them online, which is probably true. I looked for that kind of thing all over the internet, never found anything. And then all of a sudden this article comes out on the Joe Rogan show, he says he got them from a friend that works at Area 52, which is a straight out lie. Found it. Oh my God. This is amazing. It's good stuff. It is. We're going to take a break from that because, uh, you know, we've went at it for a minute. Maybe we'll continue tomorrow. I'll split it up. So that's what we're going to do. I just love watching anybody do a masterful job at proving how bad Jeremy Corbell is at making documentaries. It can't be done enough, can't be talked about enough. If it was me, I'd talk about it every day, but I can't. And you don't like it when I talk about the same thing every day or else I, I, I don't know, you wouldn't be here. Oh, uh, I, I have a video I need to play. It's that time. Yeah, this is where we have talent to show you. You understand, right? You understand? All right. Uh, with permission from Carnundrum, it is uh, again time for Got Talent Ufology. This is season three, PDO4. Why is it a P4? I don't understand that. What does P mean? You have episode, you have, uh, is it, is it episode three, P4, part four? Oh, I got it. Got it. Here we go. Commercial time. <laughs> Who's that guy in the middle? Relationship between Canada and the U.S. You have, for example, NORAD, uh, which is uh, actually the, the deputy director is a Canadian. Um, so, so you have this, this, this shared concern over our northern tier, and it seems like neither government within, within our, our defense departments and intelligence communities really want to have the conversation. Um, it's not that they're not seeing things, because they are. The problem is that they're not really saying much about it. A lot of people said whack. Beat Klingon, he, he's fluent in Klingon. Praise the cash. Did I do good, guys? Did I read the script? You did, Twang. You did. Don't call me Twang. <laughs> you suck. Oh, my God. Oh, it's session three. Good. That's original. I like it. That was fun. <laughs> I don't, I try not to watch them until I watch them here. I didn't watch it, so that was a good one. That was Travis Taylor. Yep. Why do you have to talk about everybody? <clears throat> Bob, if I don't talk about you and other people in this field, how are they supposed to know what, what, what to believe in or who's lying, things like that? Well, there's no reason to bring me up. I'm not doing anything new. gonna it hasn't dropped yet it's still there it goes nah you wouldn't hear that one damn that was a scary beginning though I thought we were gonna get pounded all right let's roll out the last 30 minutes of this show in a serious manner. 
Um, a plane ticket away. New research shows humans settled in North America, get this, 17,000 years earlier than previous believed. Bones of Mammoth and her calf found at an ancient butchering site in New Mexico. It shows they were killed by people 37,000 years ago. What? See, this is what annoys me to no end. Why are we stuck on 10,000 years? 12,000 years? I think humans have been around over 100,000 years. I don't think that we've only been us for 250,000 years or so. No, 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 no. No, I think we're being lied to or they haven't figured it all out. There's still more to be unearthed. And every time they're unearthing something they haven't seen before, it's bringing us further back. I mean, look at, you know, what what they found at a Gobekli Tepe. All of those things are buried in sand. And they all those little monoliths, little, I say, th- thousands of pounds, 15,000 pounds. What are they, eight tons? Some of them, 100 tons. I don't know, whatever they are. They've got carved in animals and some writing. I don't know if it's cuneiform or whatever. I know, cuneiform. But holy mackerel. And they've only unearthed about 6%. And they've already got a lot of them. You know, like, this is remarkable what they're finding. And it makes us older than what we think we are. That great flood that they talk about, when? That apparently could have taken down Atlantis 12,000 years ago or so. I don't know. Is it 10,500 years ago? Somewhere in there, according to uh, Graham Hancock and, and Randall, can't remember his name, those two guys found evidence of a massive flood which they are saying is tied to a meteor striking the ice that was covering the northern two-thirds of the United States. Melted it. I'm sure it melted it in record time, which is why we had the flooding. I'm not so sure how that could have rolled its way into the sea, but maybe it did and it caused some great flooding that overtook Atlantis as well. Or I think there were multiple meteors that were hitting in that area. But whatever it was, there was a flood. And it's and you can see massive landscapes that look like if you looked at a riverbed, you know how you see the sand looks like it's rippled, like like a potato chip, a, a ruffles, you know, those lines. You can see that hundreds of miles from satellites looking down on the earth. That's a massive wall, a thousand feet tall of water came rushing over the plains just created the Great Lakes, Mississippi River. Um, My God, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, you could look at the Grand Canyon and look at the history of the water. It didn't make it, I don't think, all the way there. I don't know how that flood worked. I don't know where the water went. I think the mountains were too high. Maybe that was it. The same mountains 10,000, 12,000 years ago are the same ones that are still there that would probably, you know, contain that water somewhat, or I don't know, man. Whatever it is, there was a a catastrophe like that. And they're still finding and unearthing things that uh, shouldn't be found. Imagine the stuff they're hiding from us. That's what sets, that's what sets me off. I know they're hiding stuff. Oh, here it is. I, I knew I still had this up. Let me just show you real quick. I I always wanted to be like an archaeologist, but it didn't work out. I never followed suit, trust me. I wanted to do other things. All right. Uh, yeah, humans settled in North America 17,000 years earlier. I think they're proving it here with some sort of topography showing different eras. Wow. 
oldest Toriva block way down here. 1,900 meters down. What the frig? Rio Puerco? I don't know. 100 meters direction of Torivo block lie. I don't know. It looks like things uh, slid down the mountain. I, I don't know. Anyway. But they're getting that proof. It's happening as we speak. Humankind is older than we think. And I'm not just talking about Homo sapiens. I'm talking about intelligent human beings. Much earlier than people thought that were here in North America. Isn't that wild? It's crazy. I just want to know of all the stuff they're not showing us. You know what I mean? Imagine all the things that are being hidden. It just amazes me. There's people out there right now in their closets. Me and Third Phase have talked about this and Michael and other panel members. How many people right now probably have some sort of evidence of UFOs or ghosts, apparitions, some evidence somewhere proving the existence of these things in their home, in a shoebox, in a wall, in a safe, underground? It's got to be in the thousands. There's got to be thousands of documents that are just sitting there waiting to be talked about. But if Lou thinks we're halfway to disclosure, we wouldn't need that evidence in a few years, right? So technically, if we were to think we're there, halfway there, and we did that with Lou's help, the mighty Lou working tirelessly behind the scenes, as he says, I don't see that proof. But anyway, we got about three more years till we have 100%. I'll say four. No, I'll give him five. By the year 2027 and a half, we're going to be sitting here and I'm going to be bitching and I'm going to say, remember about five and a half years ago, Lou said we were halfway to disclosure. Where's Lou? We got Gary Nolan and Travis Taylor running ufology. No, we're just trying to imagine a future. <sighs> Imagine those two Nimrods. The reason I say that, I don't want these guys in charge. I want somebody from the right, somebody from the left. And I want somebody with years as an experiencer who was military, retired, and has video proof that they're, they know how to look at the sky and record things. And they can do, no, me, I want to be in there. I want to be that, damn it. It's not right. I don't like the way you talk. You're, you're just not politically correct enough to be in mainstream. Fuck, I ain't. No, you're ruining ufology with your rhetoric. Your rhetoric isn't good. What, telling the truth? Because I'm passionate, I'm mad, I'm angry that your guys are lying all the time? They're, they're, they're very defensive and they character assassinate people that anybody disagrees with. They lie about where they worked, where they didn't work. We didn't know for nine, 10 years that Travis Taylor was even part of UAPX. Had no idea. Did you know? I didn't know. Did you know? No, he told nobody. Working on ancient aliens, working on History Channel, working with everybody in the field as somebody, oh, well, this is very interesting. Hmm acting like he doesn't have any access to anything. Meanwhile, could have done a lot of good things if he would have just spoke up, but he didn't. And now it's too late, too late for you. Makes me so mad. Anyway, that's what I mean. They, I don't know. We need somebody that is an experiencer, that understands the lie, that can understand what they're trying to accomplish and adjust it accordingly. There's got to be some happy median here. And there isn't with our field. There just isn't. It's either you're there or you're over here. And there really is no in-between anymore. Hey. It's just like the, that they're trying to do. Get rid of the middle class. Get rid of the people in the middle. 
the most honest, hardworking ufologists around. But no, they just want to cater to each other's shows, their personalities, and, and try to make a buck with a movie that did nothing for ufology. It was a waste. It was a money grab. That's all that movie was, was a money grab for people who say and talk shit about the rest of us who earned a living in ufology. Which, by the way, for me, it's only been two years. And I've been in it for 18. So you don't know your research again. That's what bothers me. What bothers me is people getting recognition like they're doing something and they've done nothing. That movie, there wasn't an ounce of research that had to go into it. All they had to do was just go to Wikipedia and read from Wikipedia interviews from Roswell and things from this and Betty and Barney Hill and that. And how easy was it to make that documentary? There was no, no, nothing new. The only thing that was new was Brie and Chia. Jen, whatever. I just wanted it to rhyme. We're going to have girl power. <laughs> Trying to act like they're giving. It's not all about that, you know. We're going to be the main voices. Yay, no men. Oh, wait, we did have men, but very little. We used them and we had a gay guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, got to have the gay guy in there with the bisexual women. Yeah, Bisexual and trisexual. Try anything. Dun -dun -dun what? Who said that? Did I? Oh, Rich Giordano said this about so-and-so. Hey, hey, she knows what she did. She knows what she did that I can't talk about. <laughs> and I'm sorry for that person. I'm not going to say it. Well, this is megalithic. Peru. There are stories that talk about an ancient culture one existed thousands of years before the Inca, called the Perhaul or Verococan, who had some form of advanced technology which was lost. Look at this. Mamma mia pizzeria. Look at this. This is amazing. And, and if you were to go up here, I've seen this before. They have like little, uh, like you can take a bath. You can see where the kitchens were. You know, you can see the soot on the walls, you know, from the cooking and whatnot, I think. Uh, and then they have bathhouses down here. Uh, you can have, a, uh, I don't know, some sort of recital up here. I don't know. This, this place was wickedly cool. People live there. It's wild. You're only seeing half of it. The top's been chopped off. How cool. I love megaliths. <laughs> Look at this. This looks like that big old machine that rode around on sand with the Jawas. Rutubu! Oh, no, that's the wrong movie. Yeah. That's it. This is crazy talk right here. Talk. Crazy look. This is just. I can't. How? How? Look at this. Yeah, you know, the front. You got a view of the, the world out there. You know, you got the patio right in the front. You got a little. Uh, man cave over here, it looked like. Got the seats and the studio for the TV. I don't know, man. It makes me wonder if they did have, if they had that technology, what did they do for entertainment? Plays? Drink? Get high? No, really, I'm, I'm not even joking. What did they do? They worked, everybody worked. Everybody contributed to society. As soon as you you come out of the womb, you're already, you know, I don't know, putting together shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But you had to contribute. And that's all they did. They These people just work. Is it possible that they could build this stuff if that's all they did day in and day out? 
Were they ordered to? Eh, you know what I mean? Everybody works here 10, 12 hours a day. You get a free couple free meals of soup and whatever. Go home, go get baked, go relax, rejuvenate, have some sex, make some more kids. We'll make this army strong. We got to work. We got a lot of work to do. Amazing. We, oh, you got to look at this. We are living on an alien world. We're living it. Who's to say we need to go off planet to find what I'm about to show you? We don't need to go anywhere. We're here. We're on the planet with the weirdness. Look at this. Why am I yelling? See, I did it. All right. 38 minutes. wild like why does that even exist that's from that movie avatar off of that planet pandora i love that stuff i love it yeah i guess the storms are over oh brother jesus how is a peer-reviewed journal? Oh, I meant to talk to you about this tonight. I'm going to save it for tomorrow because I need it. I need something for tomorrow. All right, let's, uh, let's end the show. Thank you, everybody, for tonight. That, I don't know if you had a good time or what. I don't know, man. It just felt weird tonight. So I hope you at least enjoyed yourselves in the chat room, had some fair conversation. Uh, I do want to thank the moderators and the super chatters. I'm going to check one more time to see if there was any more coming in while I was talking. I don't want to miss anybody. And we're all in the clear. Wait. Huh. Wait a second. We're clear. Thank you, moderators and super chatters. We had a little bit of activity tonight. I'm glad you guys stuck with it. Josh and Artemis have a show tonight coming right up here in the next, well, you know, four or five minutes. And um, they will drop the link. Hellfire Studios with a hump day $5 super chat. Thank you at the last minute. Hellfire, good friend of the show. Appreciate that, man. Right at the end. Thank you. Mucho gusto, generoso. And thank you, newcomers and veterans. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe the show either. You guys have been doing a great job. We need more comments in the in the comment section. And you can help support the show with that thanks button that's underneath every video after it's been live, you know. If you still want to contribute, all the links are in the description. And, uh, and uh, you can become a member of Goofon. Thank you, Hellfire Studios. Mucho gusto, generoso. And what are we? What are we? Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Truthology for ufology. <laughs> See? See? Who's this guy? Oh! Oh, no! Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. One show tomorrow. That's it. Eh, I don't know. Maybe we'll do Goof on Lives. Keep an eye out for... Uh, a video for the members later on tonight. Giddy up. Go to Josh and Artemis show right now.